Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do today, I'll be starting a new series on Salesforce Net Zero Cloud. Uh, let me maximize this screen. Okay, so the agenda for this course is to make you guys understand the capability of Net Zero Cl Cloud in general. So it will be, uh, I guess, maybe six to seven episodes or perhaps more. So in today's episode, what I'm going to talk about, I'll be uh, discussing uh, the meaning of net zero cloud, net zero um, uh, greenhouse emissions, uh, carbon credits, and why net zero cloud is important, uh, not only from a Salesforce perspective, uh, but also from a um, you know reporting perspective. And you, if you are a company who's serious about uh, going net zero, right? Um, okay, so let's get started, right? So, and also I will also show you how to register for an org. So that's the simple agenda for today. But today will be mostly slides because I want you guys to understand uh, the basic things around, you know, climate change, the greenhouse, um, carbon footprint, right, uh, and carbon credits, right. Obviously, as you know, right, climate change is a, is a big thing. It's a serious concern, right. No matter what people try to tell you that, hey, climate change is, you know, it's all. Uh, whatever, you know, many people will try to say, hey, you don't have to worry about it. We still got a lot of time. I mean, if everyone starts thinking that way, right, our planet is going to end up in uh, nowhere. You know, it will going to end up in a collapsing state the way it goes, right? Look at the uh, uh, the melting ice uh, in Antarctica, right? Polar caps are melting. Uh, we will be in a scenario where there won't be any polar bears left, right? Uh, we will be in a scenarios where... You know, a lot of insects will die off, right? It will be in a scenario where many species will get endangered. Why? Because most of the things are human uh, contributor, right? Like, for instance, you know, for the past 50 years, our carbon uh, dioxide, carbon emissions, right, in, in simple terms, has gone drastically higher uh, because of the burning fossil fuels, extensive use of cars, uh, other transportation, right? So that's, in a nutshell, right, um, one of the main reasons uh, why we are in a scenario where the the weather pattern is quite different, right? The places where it's supposed to rain and never rains, places where, like for instance, I read a report many years ago, Dubai had a, a snow, right? Imagine Dubai getting a snow, right? That's pretty bizarre, right? And, and the places uh, which used to be, you know, all the time green uh, started getting droughts there. So it's, it's not really pretty from a planet perspective, right? I mean, it's not going to be pretty from a human perspective, right? Because we are doing things which will make us extinct at one point of time, uh, you know. And to not to uh, to let that happen, we need to act, okay? And I'm a business owner. I run a company, so it's my responsibility as a business owner to go net zero, uh, you know, by 2030. Uh, at least that's what I'm aiming for. So, okay, so I, I think I've done enough of talking, right? I've been talking all these jargons. You must be thinking, what the heck this guy is even talking about, right? So what is net zero, right? That's the first question. Okay, so net zero, you know, it's a concept in the context of climate change, right? I give you a brief talk on climate change, right? Why it's important to preserve our planet, uh, you know, why it's important to look after our uh, carbon emissions, why it's important to go net zero. Okay, because... Uh, so, okay, so net zero, like I said, is, an, is a concept in the context of climate change because it refers to achieving a balance between amount of greenhouse that's been produced and the amount of greenhouse that's been removed from atmosphere, right? So obviously what will happen is that you keep on emitting greenhouse, right? It needs to be removed from the atmosphere, right? Obviously uh, greenhouse is important, right, to, to maintain the temperature of a planet, but too much of everything is bad right? It applies to everything's in life, right? So same thing applies here, right? As long as we have a balance between the amount of greenhouse that's been emitted and the amount of greenhouse that's been removed, we will not have an issue with the climate change. We won't be even talking about it. I won't be even talking about net zero cloud if that's the case, but that's not the case, right? You can read a report about various scientists, various professors who've been actively involved in, in, in studying climate change, they published a huge stats around 
why things are getting bad for our planet. Okay, so why does it matter, right? Why do we care? Okay, I give you enough theory. Why do I care? You know, I'm not doing anything, right? I'm just sitting in my house. Some of you might even, uh, you know, wonder, right? Why should it even concern me, right? Okay, so from a simple, uh, you know, layman perspective, why do net zero cloud matters, okay? So let me give you five uh, reasons, okay? So net zero cloud means balancing greenhouse emission, as I said, right? To, as long as we have a balance, right, uh, we are okay, right? Amount of gas that's emitted, amount of the gas that's been removed. So if we have an equilibrium between those two, then we don't have any problem. Now, why does it matter to you, right? Because you're a part of a planet. It's not that you're living in a, in a Mars or, or in the moon of a Saturn or Jupiter, right? Yeah. Well, I guess you can't live in those moon either because our body, our carbon body, the biological body, will not be capable to sustain the temperature difference and, and the air. We, you, it will be toxic for us, right? Mars could be an exception as long as we terraform Mars. Okay. All right, so if you, so if you as a civilization, if you as a uh, citizen of uh, planet Earth don't care about the net zero cloud, then you are actually a part of a problem, not a part of a solution. Because, you know, if you say, I don't care, if everyone says, I don't care, then our planet will be in a doomsday state, which is not really great, right? You and I have no place to go apart from Earth. At least I don't. I mean, if you have a place to go and live in Mars, that's a different story, right? Why ruin uh, Earth atmosphere to begin with? Okay, sorry, I digress, but I'm extremely passionate about climate change, so I can't stop myself from talking about it. So my apologies. Okay, achieving net zero is essential to mitigate the impact of climate change, right? Protects human health and supports sustainable economic growth. Now, um, why human health is important, why I'm talking about human health, okay? The impact of climate change is that you've, I mean, we have recently seen floods in Auckland. A lot of homes got, uh, you know, got damaged. Uh, I read a news recently about a tornado, I think in Mississippi, that the mass, you know, it's smashed the, the houses and, and the town, right? Which is a pretty, pretty bad uh, view when you look at, uh, from, when you look at, the uh, the pictures from, from from a television or from from an internet or from a news feed, right? It look at, and imagine the lives of those people, right? Now they have to go and live somewhere else. They have to wait for insurance money. Some people would have jobs. Some people would have you know schools to go. So they have to relocate, right? And some people would have even got impacted with the tornado. Some people would have lost their lives. So it is a it's not really a good outcome, right? So. The net zero also sends signals to other countries. So that's one important point. Now, let's say, for instance, I live in New Zealand, right? New Zealand is very, very active in, in promoting the cause for climate change. We have a Green Party here. They're pretty active. And if, let's say, for instance, if New Zealand is doing its job, right, we're going to send a message to the rest of the world. Hey, we are looking after our planet. We are doing our share to protect this planet. Are you doing your share, okay? So that will encourage a greater international cooperation, which is a very good. Um, now, transition to low carbon energy can stimulate innovation. That's right. So for instance, right, uh, Tesla. Um, although I'm not a big fan of Tesla, right? I mean, I like Elon Musk, right? He's innovative, he's, he's, he's tech genius, but Tesla is shite. I mean, no offense, but I don't like Tesla. But uh, I've test driven Tesla, I didn't like it, right? I could, I could go for electric car, but not a Tesla one. So a lot of things are going electric, which is great. Um, so, and that means a lot of jobs are getting produced, right? Like electric battery manufacturing, electric car manufacturing, um, and other stuff, right? Um, so it will uh, increase the job count in different parts of the world, which is great for the economy. Okay, uh, achieving net zero promotes environmental stewardship and help prevent, preserve the planet for future generation, which is cool. So I hope that's clear why net zero matters, right? And what is net zero in a nutshell? I'm not talking anything from a Salesforce perspective. I'm just giving you a general information because it's very important before you even dive into net zero uh, about this topic. Why even care, right? Why even uh, bother to do these kind of things? Okay, what is greenhouse? All right, let's go back to your uh, level 10 science class, okay? 
greenhouse refers to release of gases into atmosphere that traps heat and contributes to greenhouse effect, right? Which is pretty simple uh, definition and which is pretty important at the same time uh, to regulate the temperature of the earth, right? Pretty simple, right? Nothing fancy. Um, now, what's been going on for the past 50 years, 100 years, we human beings, we, because we're pointing fingers at us, animals didn't contribute that much, right? Like we did. So we human beings burned so much of fossil fuels for the past you know, 50 years or caused deforestation, cutting trees, not planting it, and ruined so much of stuff on the planet Earth that it, it leads to a massive greenhouse explosion in the atmosphere, which leads to enhanced greenhouse effect, global warming, climate rise, in polar caps melting, right? This is a sign of our own action. And some people say, hey, that's a natural uh, solar thing going on. That's not natural. Natural solar varies when the temperature rises to, say, one degree, okay, rather than rising to 10 degrees. That's not natural. I mean, people can come up with, uh, some says, hey, no, it's a conspiracy. The thing with this, that, right, I tell you the problem with the people who don't like to see the scientific data, they just don't like to be told that they are wrong. That's the biggest problem. And these people, they go out and say, hey, all the scientists, educated scientists, MIT scientists, PhD people are stupid, which is pretty, pretty insane in my opinion, right? And the problem is that, right, I have nothing against people who want us to talk about, you know, spread all the conspiracy. After all, we have freedom of speech. But freedom of speech does not mean that you spread false information and stop other people from doing the job. So that's the biggest concern I have with these people. So um, the main uh, greenhouse, you know, carbon dioxide, right? Obviously, you the, the plants takes the carbon dioxide to release oxygen, but you know, if you if you're gonna abuse this process, then obviously it's not gonna work, right? The natural greenhouse process. So methane is another thing. The the cow. Uh, there's a there. There was a report in New Zealand about the cow releasing too much of methane. I'm not 100% sure about that. I haven't had a chance to read it, but someone did mention. So that is causing. Um, the thing is that why are we even talking about cows, right? You may ask because these things add up. And I mean, if human beings hasn't been playing around with our nature, right? We wouldn't be even talking about cows, methane, right? Because what difference it makes? But we have screwed up the planet to to extreme level right now even the tiny increase is causing a lot of imbalance in the planet so which that's why you know the scientists are working to make sure that we don't add more you know debt uh to the planet atmosphere so okay so reducing greenhouse uh, emission is critical to mitigating the impact of climate change uh, which is cool right so most of the companies or even countries are are committed to achieve net zero by 2050. Uh, cool. Okay, what is a carbon credit? Which is a very commonly talked uh, topic. You might have heard about it. You might have seen people talking about it. And you may wonder what the heck these guys are even talking about, right? Okay, carbon, uh, sorry, carbon credits are market-based um, option designed to reduce the greenhouse emission, okay? It's like a, a cert certificate or permit that allows a company uh, to emit a certain amount uh, into the atmosphere, right? So, um, so it does create a financial incentive. So, for instance, if I run a uh, farm mill, right, which produce, which is responsible for generating a wind energy, so I'll be having, say, uh, I'll be having carbon credit for uh, for promoting low uh, carbon emission. So I can sell that carbon credit to another company who is not able to, say, uh, uh, maintain the carbon uh, emission within 10%. Okay, so uh, so it's like mutually beneficial. <clears throat> um, so that's the only thing I can I can talk about at this stage. Okay, so that's in a nutshell. All right, so I, I spoke about a few things. I spoke about, you know, carbon credit. I spoke about greenhouse. I spoke about you know, net cloud. Now, where does Salesforce fit into this? equation right why do you even talking about salesforce okay so if you're a company right let's say i'm a comp i run a company so i'm not a company so i'm a human being um if i run a company so i run a company i run in fact two companies 
So I wanted to, my plan is to go, in, in fact, one of my investors asked me the other day, when are you planning to go for uh, net zero option? Uh, you know, I, you know, I said, well, we're working on it. So one of the main thing, right, I as a, a CEO of my company wants to do is to achieve net zero, okay, by 2030. That's the plan. Uh, so I'm looking at Salesforce Net Zero Cloud, which will help me achieve that goal. Now, how is the Salesforce Net Zero going to achieve it? There are three ways the Salesforce Net Zero at least could help my company. Carbon footprint tracking, emissions reduction planning, carbon offset. If you don't understand any of it, don't worry. I'll just explain you in a second. Okay, let's look at carbon footprint tracking. Okay. Now, carbon footprints, right? We all have a carbon footprint. Okay. So, you know, for instance, the amount of energy we use, the transportation we use, the supply chain we use, everything contributes to a carbon footprint. Okay. Now, if I as a company wants to track it, right, it's very difficult for me to track it if I maintain everything in an Excel document, right? Because information can vary. So, you know, it's very difficult for me to create uh, a comprehensive report based on that to see, hey, what's my carbon footprint tracking, right? Is my company on the right track to achieve the net zero, right? Um, so if I have everything scattered, let's say, uh, in a Excel sheet, you know, sometimes the data may be obsolete. Sometimes the data might be corrupt. Um, you know, there are a lot of things goes on, right? So it's not really a great way to do a carbon footprint tracking. Though you can, some companies are still doing it, but it's not really very efficient from my perspective as a business owner. So I can use Salesforce Net Zero Cloud for carbon footprint tracking and in a very efficient way. Okay. All right. And that's one thing, right? Oh, I hope that's clear. So, and I can also do the, you know, tracking emission data in the real time rather than relying on like, you know, two months old data. Okay. So, and then what that will do is that it helped me identify area which I need to improve to uh, reduce the carbon footprint. Okay. All right. Emission and reduction planning. So that's, you know, equates to my previous thing I mentioned about the carbon footprint. So, you know, obviously I'm looking for a framework or a platform um, which help which let me give, which actually helps me uh, to look at a different emission reduction strategy, right? Because obviously I need to know what's my emission levels are, right? Before I can even act on it. If I have no clue what's going on, how do you think that I will be able to even fix something which I'm not even aware of, okay? So for that, I need to analyze the emission data, uh, so to do that, I can use the Net Zero Cloud, right? It can give me option to analyze emission data. And based on that, I can identify the area which I can make a bigger impact, right? And I can have a certain target and see if I can achieve the target, educate my you know, team members who works for me uh, to set that target, to, sorry, to achieve that target, okay? Um, so, uh, and also I can involve my investors to say, hey, this is the target we're going to set. This is how we're going to achieve it, right? Obviously, investors will like when you have a clear uh, roadmap, you know, to achieve certain things. If I'm an investor, right, if, if CEO comes to me and say, hey, I have no clear picture, I'll, I'll be very pissed. I'll be very honest with you, right? The same thing I expect that investor will have, the same kind of expectation investor will have from me as well, right? So if I wanted to achieve a net zero cloud, sorry, net zero by 2030, I need to have a certain goals in place and I need to show to my investor, this is how we're going to achieve it. These are our goals. These are our objectives. And this is a platform where we're going to use to track it. And based on that information, I can act on it. Right. Okay, cool. Carbon offsetting. Pretty simple. Okay. Net zero companies to offset the carbon emission by investing in verified carbon. I mean, I can... Uh, by you know you know carbon offset projects I can sorry I can fund carbon offset project right for instance you know re, you know renewable energy uh, reforestation you know energy efficiency all kind of stuff right so by offsetting the emissions companies can take immediate action to reduce the carbon footprint so that's one way so I can track all of this using Salesforce Net Zero Cloud that's where the Net Zero Cloud shines right I can 
let's say for instance i have a lot of data set about my bills about the energy consumption and instead of having everything in it in excel sheet right i can use the api to dump it to the salesforce and let the salesforce work its magic and show me the real dashboard right so that i can set a metrics i can work on the uh, uh, the displayed figure to see if we are on the right track okay so i i guess that that covers a basic idea around why i you know we as a company right uh, decide to go with Salesforce Net Zero Cloud. So I'm not going to teach you this uh, just because I wanted you guys to know uh, about it just for the sake of knowing, but I'm going to teach you from a business owner perspective, right? Because I run a company and I, if you're a business owner, right, who's very serious about Net Zero Cloud, consider looking at Salesforce Net Zero Cloud. Okay, now another thing, okay? So, all right, I wanted to try it out. How do I try it out? Okay, that's a, that's a question you might be keen to ask, right? Okay, I wanted to try Net Zero Cloud. Give me a damn org, right? How do I go about registering one? That's pretty simple, right? Okay, so I'll put the link in the description below. Don't worry about it. So you go to developer.salesforce.com, free trial. So you can try the uh, free trial, okay? You log in. I'll give you a login ID. I'll give something like that, right? I haven't configured it. I'll configure it with you guys so that you'll get an idea, you know, how to go about setting it. It's going to be very useful if you're a business owner, right? So play, so I pay close attention to all my upcoming videos on an Zero Cloud. This is not a marketing video, right? Salesforce is not paying me for absolutely for anything, okay? I'm doing this because I'm extremely passionate about climate change costs, okay? And if you're interested, uh, you can also read my climate change diaries, okay? So I wrote, you know, four articles so far. Uh, the, if, if you don't know what is climate change, right? Forget about everything. If you, if you have no idea what climate change is, and if you think that my, you know, 10 minutes, like 15 minutes talk, what I, you know, the, the 15 minutes talk about this net, zero cloud is useless then i would highly encourage you to you know go to this understanding the negative impact of climate change i mentioned the disadvantage of climate change and the five things you can do right to help with the climate change so i'll put the link in the description below um if you're interested go through my blog you'll find a lot of valuable information you can also see um if you wanted to you know embrace a poetry which i've uh kind of uh, put across you can you, know, <laughs> you you can do that as well um, and also if you wanted to see how different countries are uh, helping uh, with the climate change you can I think uh, somewhere I mentioned I don't know where it is okay this one right 10 countries leading the charging and climate change so you can read about say for instance Sweden what they want to do, Finland, Denmark, Norway, right? Uh, New Zealand, right? New Zealand, the country where I live, <clears throat> my home. So we are planning to achieve the net zero greenhouse by 2050, right? So you'll see the concept of net zero everywhere. So that's why it's important for me to teach you guys what net zero means in the first place, right? <clears throat> Switzerland, Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a pretty, pretty amazing country. Uh, so I haven't been to Costa Rica, Costa Rica, right? I've been to, you know, a few Latin American countries, but not Costa Rica. Uh, Switzerland is always, you know, top of the list for everything. All the good things come from Switzerland, right? So um, Germany, UK, France, United States is not in the list because I remember that because of the reason they pulled out from a, I think the uh, the Paris Climate Change Summit for because of their action, they are not really at the top of the list. I think now they are acting on it. So when Trump was in power, I don't know why he was not convince that climate change is a real problem but you know that's a political thing right i really don't want to get into it okay so that's all i wanted to cover in today's episode i hope you guys enjoyed it this is the first introduction uh sorry for my rant but as you can see i'm extremely passionate about climate change so this is the one thing which i'm extremely passionate about anything in my life uh than anything in my life okay all right sorry <clears throat> so that's all i wanted to talk in today's episode. I hope you guys have an amazing Monday. Adios.